Welcome to the Smoke Learning Channel. This set of videos focus on tracking. Throughout the series, we have looked at different workflows of applying tracking in Autodesk Smoke. Now let's finish off the series by dealing with difficult tracking tasks. These methods would be utilized when a target goes off screen, something disappears behind another object, or just having to bite the bullet and perform manual assisted tracking. If you would like to follow along, please click the link in the YouTube description to download the media. If you are watching the podcast version of this video, then type the link displayed in your internet browser. For this example, we have our car driving off screen and we would like to remove the letters of the car name. We are going to start in action where I have already loaded our background and I have also provided a frame with a section of the car door cleaned up. So double click on the layer axis to select it. Leave the stabilizer settings to only track position. Click the stabilizer button to get started. Scrub through the time bar to examine the move. This is something I always advise people to do as you might see something that could assist with the track. The main point to mention is that the logo goes off screen and we want to deal with this using tracking. There are three methods I recommend. Firstly, if something is just going off screen, you could just tell the tracker to keep going in the same direction. This is fine in some instances but not all. The second method is to find another reference pattern in the middle of the track and pick up where the first reference fails. This works in so many scenarios for creating a continuous solid track. You could use this method to track a very long camera move with targets appearing and disappearing from view. The list does go on, but it's a great method to know. And finally, there is the manual assisted tracking where you can use the reference pattern as an overlay image to eye match a tracking move. This is used when the tracker cannot grab onto anything including crazy camera moves like swish pans or any extremely defocused shot. Let's start off with method 1. Go to frame 1. Pick up the tracker boxes and place them on the letters of the car name. Press Analyze. The tracker boxes will work correctly until the car goes off screen. Press Option D to delete all the bad keyframes until you get to the last good keyframe of the track. Now if you scrub the time bar, the tracker boxes already keep travelling in the same direction they were headed at the same velocity. If you want to apply this end motion permanently to the track, you need to do this through the animation menu. Hold SHIFT and click on one of the SHIFT sliders to select the tracking curve. Click the animation button. Click anywhere in the channel section and select both SHIFT channels. If you zoom out and pan the curve, you can see that the animation curve is already set to linear extrapolation by default. To make these extrapolations permanent, go to the last frame. Click SET KEY. A keyframe is applied at the last frame and the curve is created in the viewer. Exit the animation editor. This will ensure that the track continues off screen. So this is method 1 and it works correctly provided the velocity of the movement is constant. If the velocity is not constant, you will see your track slip. The second method provides a slightly more reliable method. Click RESET ALL to start this process again. As before, go to the first frame and place the tracker boxes on the lettering. Click ANALYZE. When the track goes wrong, stop the track if you can and press OPTION D to delete all the bad keyframes. Stop on the last good keyframe. Up to here, the track is perfect. But since we lose the reference pattern, the track goes bad. So why not set another reference pattern to continue the track? To do this, switch the tools menu from SELECT to ADD POINTS. 
Now anywhere on the image, hold Control shift and drag the tracker boxes and place them on a new potential reference. The magnification box is where you must be looking at. Now switch the Tools menu back to Select. If you need to move the tracker boxes for the reference again, just hold Control shift and drag them. Just press Analyze and the track will pick up with the new reference. Don't worry about the last few frames as the track would be finished by here. Now you can stop and change the tracker reference patterns as many times as you want, so you can keep going on a very long or difficult shot. On to the third and final method. Click Reset All to start again. Now sometimes you can't get a track no matter what, so manual assistance is needed. This is how it works. Place the tracker boxes on the lettering for the last time. Press Analyze and let the track fail where expected. Delete the bad keyframes using Option D and stop at the last good frame. For any manual tracking from this frame onwards, I suggest setting the last good frame as the new reference pattern because this is more likely to match the upcoming frames. To set the current frame as the new reference pattern, simply click Snap. You can see the tracker boxes snap to this frame and we can now use this. Scrub a few frames forward but not too many. Change the Tools menu from Select to Add Points. Hold Shift and click and hold anywhere on the image and you will see an overlay appear. Do not release the cursor or hotkeys and you can move the overlay around. A new keyframe is set at this frame and you can manually place the overlay to match the frame underneath. When you release the cursor, the overlay disappears and the keyframe is applied to the animation curve. Move forward a few more frames again and perform the same keystrokes to manually plot the tracking keyframe. Now if you need to adjust any keyframe after an automatic or manual track, simply ensure you are in SELECT mode via the Tools menu. Go to the frame you want to adjust. Pick up the keyframe on the motion path and the reference pattern overlay will appear again. You can now align it up with the track for a better match. So anything can be fine-tuned or tweaked when needed. Now to finish off this example in action, click the Load button. Navigate to your Download folder and load the track off-screen setup. I want to ensure you have the same track as me in order to deal with the last tracking workflow. Click Return and return to action. Scrubbing the time bar, you can see that the center of the layer is at the center of the tracking point. Therefore, the layer is not in the correct position. In order to correctly center this layer, we need to add another axis to act as an offset and invert the first frame values. This will be clear when we do it. Switch to the Action bin. Drag out an axis and drop it in between the tracking axis and the image object. Double click on the top tracking axis and ensure you are on frame 1. Looking at the position X and position Y values, these are the pixel amounts that the layer is offset from the center of the composite. So if you want to accurately center the layer in the composite after tracking, we need to invert these values in the offset axis. So X is 92.28 and Y is minus 457.12. Remember those numbers. Click the offset axis in the action schematic. Now we will type the same numbers but inverted into the same channels. Click the X position slider and type minus 92.28. Click the Y position slider and type 457.12. This should center the layer and place the fix accurately on the card door. To make this work well, we need a bit more motion blur on the layer. Switch to the Node Preferences menu. Under the Rendering tab, enable Motion Blur. 
set the samples to 10 and the shutter to 0.3. Exit Connect Effects and press the Render button. Once the render is complete, we can now look at the result in the full screen player. This concludes the series on tracking. Hopefully, these videos have given you enough information to follow targets with precision and take on everyday tracking tasks. Comments, feedback and suggestions are welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Smoke Learning channel for future videos.